the south of Vietnam, the Mekong Delta covers an area of four million hectares, which is covered by one to four meters of water each year for three to four months. The Vietnamese farmers, long committed to sustainable development, live with the water and draw maximum benefit from it by producing rice combined with fishing and aquaculture. Over the last two decades, the overproduction of rice has resulted in such a drop in price and consequently of their incomes that it has forced many rice farmers, who are also fishermen during the flood periods, to undertake increasingly intensive diversified fish farming. From the earliest times, Asiatic rice farmers have been in contact with wild fish making their way into their paddy fields. These pioneer species colonize every new aquatic milieu by laying great quantities of eggs. Of these, the climbing perch is particularly appreciated. It is known for emerging from the water by day or night in search of new habitats. Attracted by the streams of water occasioned by the heavy rains, it uses its broad apercula and its flexible caudal peduncles to move over the ground and thus reach the rice fields that it rapidly colonizes. This behavior sometimes gives rise to the belief that this fish falls from heaven. It's a great moment for the farmers who can thus improve their meal by the addition of this excellent fish. But this type of occasional harvest is restricted to a few dozen kilos per hectare and is no more than a supplementary food. Also, in order to improve their incomes on a regular basis, the Vietnamese farmers have extensively developed the production of this fish by catching it or buying the fingerlings of the climbing perch from those who have cultivated them. Put in the rice fields in densities of one or more per square meter, the fingerlings grow without artificial food. Four to five months later, the fish are harvested for eating in the order of 100 to 300 kilos per hectare. This type of extensive farming has its limits. First of all, there is the time factor. It is only possible to collect the wild fingerlings during the second half of August. That is, just a few weeks after natural reproduction. Moreover, the age of the fingerlings is unknown. And finally, because the conditions for raising them are not always adequate, the neotenism that is seen in tilapias can be observed. That is, precocious maturity with a halt or slowing down in growth and therefore production. That is why around the year 2000, perceiving the market potential, from 30,000 to 90,000 dongs the kilo at Ho Chi Minh, a few enterprising farmers from the province of Angyang then from Dong Thap, and more recently the neighboring provinces, started to farm intensively, going from rice plus fish farming to intensive farming of the climbing perch, putting in some 20 to 50 fish per square meter, sometimes even several hundred. To do this, it was necessary to master the production cycle of the species. And in this undertaking, they were directly supported by the researchers and students of the Department of Aquaculture at the University of Cantor. Let us see the different stages of this remarkable saga of the domestication of the climbing perch, which starts with a knowledge of the characteristics of the species. This is followed by mastering its reproduction, the production of the fingerlings, and finally fish for consumption. The climbing perch, Anabas testidoneus, is a small species that generally attains a length of 10 to 15 centimeters. It belongs to the order of Persiforms. This fish is in fact covered with spines. They are particularly numerous on the front part of the long dorsal fin, which is shorter than the anal fin, and has strong anterior spines. As for the opercula, they have very spined edges. The scales of the ctenoid type are very rough. The terminal mouth is equipped with conical teeth on the jaws and the palate. The climbing perch forms part of the family of Anabantidae, 
which is characterized by two pairs of external nostrils, of which the front ones are tubular. A lateral line in two parts, a very short caudal peduncle, and a rounded tail which is not forked. A remarkable adaptation of the fish of this family is the labyrinth of the cavity above the gills with its numerous highly vascular convolutions. It is a real accessory respiratory organ, allowing the fish to breathe in oxygen from the air and so to remain out of water without suffocating. One favorable characteristic for breeding this fish is its sexual dimorphism. With a less tapering body than that of the male, the female has a broader and thicker head. The coloring of her abdomen is duller and is never yellowish like that of the male. Moreover, it is very fertile, with large ovaries containing very small eggs, from 300,000 to 700,000 eggs a kilo. The climbing perch likes to live in stagnant and muddy waters, where the vegetation, aquatic and semi-aquatic, is well developed. Widespread throughout Asia, it is to be found from Sri Lanka to China, from Indonesia to the Philippines. It has been caught and raised extensively in rice fields from time immemorial and is generally sold live in markets and restaurants, where it can be kept alive for several days in a little water. Since 2002, the Department of Agriculture at the University of Cantor has been conducting research on the controlled reproduction of this species. Those selected for reproduction are kept, fed, and transported in floating cages. Directly taught to the students who must each produce a certain quantity of fingerlings, the technique consists in selecting a male and a female of 100 grams, then with injecting the female with the chemicals made available. In practice, the contents of an LRHA flask and two tablets of motilium are mixed in a mortar and diluted in physiological serum with a view to giving the female an intraperitoneal injection consisting of a dose of 70 to 100 milligrams per kilo. For the males outside the optimal period of reproduction in May, the injected dose is one-third of that of females. All that remains to be done is to put the male and female in their nuptial bin containing well aerated water. Reproduction takes place naturally during the night the couple producing a large quantity of small eggs in a floating nest of air bubbles. The following morning, the students recover the eggs with a finely meshed net and put them in a large basin containing aerated water for them to incubate. Given the high temperature, the incubated eggs rapidly hatch 24 hours later. Very active from the moment their vitamin vesicle is resorbed, and in the search for natural food, the larvae are emptied directly into a small pool, well fertilized for this purpose. The quantity is in the order of 900 to 1,000 three-day-old larvae per square meter, and feeding takes place intensively several times a day. Unfortunately, even when well fed, the survival rate of these larvae after 45 days is only around 15% as they are preyed upon by the aquatic larvae of insects, by frogs, etc. Another way of proceeding will therefore consist in keeping the larvae in polyester containers for the first few days, in order to feed them on living zooplankton and increase their size before emptying them into the pool. Certain fish farmers practicing associated pig fish farming have, by increasing the number of pigs to each hour of the ponds to two or three, eutrophicated the water to the point that fish can no longer live there. By chance, they have been able to find an alternative income thanks to species of zooplankton that live on waste food that really thrive in such a milieu. Thus, each morning at dawn, they collect the zooplankton near to the surface of the water by means of large, finely meshed nets that they drag along the banks. Then they separate this mass of zooplankton from the large waste collected and concentrate it into a container by filtering it with a suitable net. The soup ladle borrowed from the wife of this new kind of fish farmer 
will serve to fill these old food tins with zooplankton. They will thus be transported and sold to fish farmers who are engaged in the intensive culture of fish larvae. The production of the climbing perch for consumption is carried out in rice fields transformed into pools. Thus at Kandong village in the province of Angyang, Mr. Tai Van Tai has been cultivating the climbing perch since 1999 in a rice field of six hours. After having thoroughly deepened it to a depth of four meters, he stocked in it 700 kilos of fingerlings of climbing perch of four to five grams graded after being passed through a sieve with one centimeter meshes. In this case, the density is in the order of 250 fingerlings per square meter. Other fish farmers work at different densities, going from 50 to even 450 individuals per square meter, and they still make a profit. The cost of fingerlings of five grams, aged 1.5 months, is in the order of 5,000 dongs per kilo. The climbing perch are fed with a mixture of fish waste, rice bran, broken bits of cooked rice, maize flour, and soya cake, the cost of which is in the order of two and a half thousand dongs per kilo. The fish enjoy this meal. Straight away their activity is apparent from the multitude of bubbles on the surface of the pond, revealing at the same time they are taking in oxygen from the air. Their food can also be made up by means of floating pellets, containing 25% of total protein. Bought at the food factory for fish, they are more expensive, around 6,400 dongs per kilo. Feeding takes place twice a day, with a conversion rate of two to four. Thus fed, the growth of the climbing perch is very rapid. In four to five months, they reach the commercial size of 100 grams. Given the high density of fish, the water in the pool is renewed at least once a day by means of pumps installed in the canal close to the pool. For the harvest, which lasts four days, the level of the water in the pond is lowered and using a dugout, a sen net is dragged to encircle the fish. Caught in this way, the fish are quickly carried to a makeshift swimming pool containing a little water. Spread out on a sorting table, the fish that can be sold are selected, put without water in an iron container, and weighed before being put in white iron containers filled with 180 liters of water. They can each hold 50 kilos of live fish. To limit their stress and their production of mucus, a green decoction made from crushed water spinach is added to this water. And to limit the rise in temperature of the water, a simple block of ice is sufficient. The containers are then transported on a boat, which, as soon as the cargo is complete, heads for the growth markets of the towns of Kantu and Ho Chi Minh. To this small pond of six hours, four days of successive fishing are needed to harvest the six tons of climbing perch expected. The production is in the order of 40 to 100 tons per hectare every six months, which allows two cycles a year. Thanks to their accessory respiratory apparatus, climbing perch are able to breathe oxygen from the air, which allows them to stay alive in the markets where they are seen in containers with very little water. These fish, from seven to 10 a kilo, are highly prized and sell for 30,000 to 50,000 dongs a kilo. But in the market of Ho Chi Minh, the price can reach 90,000 dongs a kilo. <laughs> Housewives buy the fish alive, but as a rule, they ask the fishmongers to prepare them for cooking by removing the scales, the spines from the fins, the entrails, the head, etc. In the house, like in the restaurant, the climbing perch can be prepared in a variety of different ways, grilled on a wood fire or boiled in water. It is very tasty and is served with different vegetables or in leaves of rice noodles. In each case, the guests thoroughly enjoy it. 
from a species of wild local fish used for a long time in the rice fields, but extensively and essentially based on the natural production of food, the Vietnamese fishermen farmers of the Mekong Delta have succeeded in intensifying its production in rapid and spectacular fashion. They thus demonstrate the capacity of the rural world to ensure its own sustainable development, insofar as the economic conditions allow them to improve their income and, in consequence, their well-being. As happy as a fish in water, this rice farmer has become a fish farmer. What could be more reassuring than to watch from the edge of the pond these fish grow while dreaming of the beautiful house that one has just built to house all one's children, at a lower density certainly than the climbing perch, but quite numerous all the same. <laughs>